who am I? I've been uh, working on both WebKit and GStreamer for quite a long time now, uh, since 2009. I'm a reviewer in WebKit and trying to review some code in GStreamer as well from time to time and committer in both. Um, I'm partner at Sigalia. <laughs> um, so actually, a few words about Sigalia, just to say that we are a cooperative, uh, worker-owned company. We are around 80 people nowadays working all over the world, and we provide consulting services around free software services, uh, free software projects. So what WP stands for, Web Platform for Embedded, the, uh, there's a missing slide there. But so to give the outline of the talk, I will give uh, an overview of the, um, of the port, uh, what you can do with it, uh, how it works, and um, have a um, hands-on uh, part about integration in IMX board, IMX6 and IMX8M boards. So WP Basics, um, it's a WebKit port, so it provides an um, API and platform-specific uh, implementations of the, of the cross-platform interfaces of WebKit. Uh, we, we base our release cycle on WebKit GTK because actually we maintain also WebKit GTK, so it's quite convenient for us to, to maintain a single branch with all the security updates and uh, the backports from Trunk. Um, WP is, is quite interesting in a sense that it doesn't uh, integrate with any UI widget library by default, and that's deferred to a plugin system we called uh, View Backends. Um, so we have View Backends for a wide range of platforms, uh, Wayland. Uh, we have an ongoing experiment with uh, on Android platform as well, though it's not upstream yet. And then for specific uh, platforms, we have uh, some backends. Uh, I can't really tell much about that, but we, we integrated WP in, on a wide range of exotic platforms you wouldn't think of in the first place. Uh, it's a bit scary, actually. <laughs> but the, the main backend we have is called FDO. Um, it stands for free desktop .org. Um, That's what we recommend in WebKit, in WP WebKit upstream, because that's where uh, all, most of the upstream developers work on nowadays. It relies on the FDO stack, so that means Mesa, um, and um, <coughs> it provides some API for, um, for specific things, uh, for access to EGL images, which is quite convenient in some cases. So you, you, you get access actually to the to the EGL images representing the, the web view contents from your application. Uh, that's quite useful. And of course, it works on, on Yocto and Build so it can be uh, enabled in, in your platform quite easily. We have meta layers for that. I will talk about it later. <coughs> so this is about multimedia. So I should talk a bit about the multimedia backend, I guess. Maybe you already know what's GStreamer, so I can't really, I don't really need to go into the details of that. But it's, it's just to give a brief introduction, it's a cross-platform multimedia back, uh, framework allowing to build multimedia applications. And here you can see uh, an example pipeline uh, of an um, Oak Vorbis media player. And it's quite simple, actually. You have the, the source, the data source at the left, and at the right you have the the rendering in audio and video syncs. And in, in between, you have the decoders, the muxers, and so on. So the data flow goes from the source to the syncs. And then you, you can really build really complicated applications with GStreamer, like with thousands and thousands of elements, and uh, it's quite powerful. So we, we use GStreamer in, in WebKit to implement the support for audio and video, as you might have guessed. We rely a lot on a, on a GStreamer uh, plugin called Playbin, which does the, all the heavy lifting of building the pipeline for us, and it provides some high-level properties and signals that uh, the application, which is WebKit in our case, can use. Uh, we have GL uh, rendering, so 
in WebKit, the, um, all the layers of the web page are composed together and, and blended together, and the video is one of those. So we need, we need to have our player to provide a, a texture to, the, to, to that infrastructure for, so that the video frames can be composited in, in the final page. Um, in WebKit, there's a, there's a library called FastMalloc, which is, um, uh, it provides uh, the equivalent of the, the malloc infrastructure, but it's specific to WebKit, so we had to integrate that in a custom allocator. And then for, or for supporting codecs, um, we had to build a whitelist of, uh, of uh, codecs that we know work well. Uh, that's actually useful for the media capabilities backend, which I'll talk about just in, in a few minutes. Um, another spec that's quite important nowadays in the web is called adaptive streaming. Uh, it's the equivalent of HLS, Dash, and so on, but for, built for the web. So I, I, I just give a, a brief overview of what my colleagues did there, Alicia and Enrique. So in, in MSC, the web application will provide uh, uh, chunks of video to the application, and those are called source buffers, and they gave um, really fine-grade uh, control uh, of the data flow to the application, so that you can, since, for instance, uh, insert ads in the middle of your video quite easily, um, video resolution changes uh, handle better and more naturally. And those chunks are demuxed in a specific pipeline we have in the backend, and then injected into web core, and then played back uh, afterwards. So we have a custom player for that, and um, a custom source element which takes those samples coming from web core and play them directly. So they are already demuxed and ready for playback. <coughs> We had to make quite a few changes in Justumer upstream to get that working quite well, uh, especially for WebM and, and uh, the MPEG-4 uh, file format. Uh, so yeah, we, we, it was a long road, but we managed to get quite a few patches uh, integrated in Justumer, now they are all upstream. Um, I won't go into the details of that, I don't really have time. So, the backend is now considered quite ma mature. Um, we use it in a wide range of platforms and even on desktop as well on, on the, the GNOME web browser, which is uh, quite cool. Um, <coughs> we also provide upstream integration with EME, so that's only the basic infrastructure. Uh, right now we only support ClearKey, uh, but if you, if you're project needs to support another uh, encryption scheme, such as white vinyl priority, you have to do it yourself currently. Um, we support uh, VP9, Opus, and all the mainstream codecs that are available, for instance, on, on YouTube. Um, we actually rewrote the source element we have for, source, uh, for MSE recently, and it now relies on the new generation Playbin element, which is called Playbin 3. Don't ask me why it's Playbin 3, I could go. <laughs> it's a funny story, but... Um, um, so now that's actually landed in, in upstream uh, since recently. There was some regressions, but we are still dealing with those. And another thing we plan to work on is a multi-track source buffer, so that's not really um, widespread used in the web but it's no, nice to have at least for test coverage. And in that case, uh, basically the web application can provide um, multiple tracks uh, at the same time and, the, and WebKit can just select the ones it wants. Another spec we've been working on, um, it's still a draft spec in, and it's about uh, letting the web application probe for the capabilities of the browser. 
uh, both on the encoding and decoding level so that the, the application can just uh, feed the right content to the browser and we, we are sure that it will work. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's quite simple. It's still a draft, but actually it's used on, on YouTube TV, so that's mostly why we, we decided to implement it. And the backend we have for the streamer on, of that spec is, is quite simple, actually. We had to provide um, a way for uh, the application to know which plugins are actually backed by, by the hardware. So we added a, a new new metadata for that in GStreamer. And then we, we, we think that it would be nice for specific plugins to do some probing when, when they are rolling up, when they are pre-rolling their, their internal state. So that's not done yet. Although we, we also added support for um, I can show it maybe in uh, later on, but every every plugin can advertise uh, which capabilities it supports, which which is called caps in GStreamer, and we uh, for specific plugins such as the video for Linux, we refine those caps uh, based on what's supported in in the kernel. <coughs> so I did that for the AVC one, and it could be done actually also for the VP nine and uh, VP eight at least. And then for more decoders such as VAPI, or, uh, it should be done as well, if possible. So we have that working only for the decoding and for the encoding, which would be useful for WebRTC, I think. Uh, it still needs to be done. So there's still more work to do on that backend. So WP is actually a library, and you can use it in your applications. Uh, I'll just give a few examples there. Um, the flagship browser we use is called COG. It's really simple. Uh, <laughs> actually, there's not even um, window decoration at, at this point. It works on desktop, but it's mainly uh, aimed for embedded use. Um, and it provides a simple API, like for navigation, reloaded, reloading the page, and there's some debug support as well. Um, and the default backend we use for that browser is the FDO backend, which we consider mature. And there's a new backend we've been working on lately, which directly relies on libdrm and uh, gbm and libinput. And uh, it's, it works quite well, to, quite well already. Um, <coughs> and we have good hopes about that. Another thing we've, I've been working on as part of our collaboration with Saffron is uh, the Qt5 QML plugin. So that's actually, it's actually quite cool if you have an existing Qt5 application uh, that's using the Qt Wave View API uh, QML plugin. And you can directly swap it with uh, the WP plugin. Um, and the API is compatible. So if if you don't want to use the, um, the upstream Qt5 uh, WebView plugin, which is actually old and not maintained anymore, and probably has some security issues, you can you can switch that to that new plugin. But the inconvenient is that it works only on Linux and and with Wayland. Uh, if you want to check the the announcement is there. Uh, and then the third application I thought about talking today is uh, GSTWP. Uh, it's, uh, we, we've been using GStreamer in WebKit for quite a long time now, and actually we n never really thought about doing the inverse until recently. Um, so now you can actually use WP in your GStreamer application. So if you have, um, um, you, you can, directly embed WebKit inside a GStreamer pipeline, which can be useful for uh, HTML overlays, for instance, in live TV broadcast, or maybe I can show a demo later if I have, I have time. And it's actually people have been doing similar things with Chromium for 
for some time already, but it's not really optimal because it's uh, the frames coming from the the browser are actually in system memory, not in GL. So you can't really do. You have to do a mem copy to upload that to the GPU, and uh, it's not really good. And in WP, it's directly available in the GPU, so you can do the the composition directly there in, in the GPU. And actually, and also one last thing is that Chromium is not really um, nice to use in application. There's a, the Ceph library, but you have to do some hacks. I saw some really nasty hacks to to use that in Gstreamer. Um, with WP, the integration was really smooth and uh, and it quite actually quite nice. <coughs> so now. Last part of the talk is about integrating WP in your boards, in your IMX6 and IMX8 boards. I won't talk about build routes. I will focus on, on Yocto, uh, but I know that people are using build route uh, quite uh, already. So at Igalia, we provide a, a layer called MetaWebKit, and it packages the main backends and applications that you can use with WP. In, in recipes for that layer. Also, it's good to have the MetaG streamer layer, even though um, the updated recipes are progressively um, moved to Pocky directly, to the, to the standard reference distro of uh, Yocto. So it might not be needed, it can be optional. And the Meta Freescale layer is also useful. I don't really remember why, but... Uh, and what we've been using is the, the AppNaviv kind of, um, driver. Uh, you could actually also use the Vivante driver, but I don't see any reason for that at this point, because AppNaviv provides uh, all the features we need, and uh, the efforts made by the community to reverse engineer the Vivante driver are, are really useful. So you, you need a recent kernel, uh, kernel um, I say it for 19, um, Mesa of course, because that's where the Innaviv driver is hosted, Wayland and, and Gstreamer for playback. Uh, and then I know for sure that the FDO backend is working quite well in that environment because I work daily on that. The RDK backend should also work, though it's less tested in, in that uh, environment. And then, if you want to have um, playback working, you need the video for Linux uh, plugin, in which are part of GC plugins. Good. <coughs> uh, on IMX6 for decoding, we rely on the Coda 960 driver. Uh, it's working quite well. Um, Actually, we have uh, Full HD working at 30 FPS in H H.264. Um, but in some cases, it doesn't. It stutters a bit, so the, f the rendering is a bit... Um, it's not really smooth. So in, in the media capabilities backend, you can... We added support for that environment variable that you can use. Uh, it's quite useful, especially in, in YouTube, because YouTube uh, can provide both full HD and 720p, but if we use that an environment variable, we, we YouTube will provide only 720p, and the playback will be smooth. <coughs> and on IMX 8M, things are still moving quite a bit. Uh, the intro G1 kernel driver is scheduled to be part of the kernel 5.4. I saw this week um, a pull request in Gstreamer uh, sent by Pangutronics, and they are adding support for V4L2 in for that uh, for that hardware. So it's going to be reviewed soon. And there, the status is that we have Full HD working, and we will support more codecs such as VP9 and HEVC. But that's still uh, ongoing, so for the long term. Right now, we focus on H.264. Um, and I wanted to conclude with 
uh, last thing about YUV. In, in WebKit um, up until recently, we, we relied on RGBA video frames. Uh, though in some cases, we noticed that it had a um, significant performance impact, especially like for the Vivante uh, driver and Enaviv to some degree. So we decided to add YUV, interleaved YUV support in, in WebKit so that we can reduce a bit the number of, of color space conversion. And in, in IMX 8M, the cost of doing that conversion is a bit similar, I think, to, to, what's, to what's done for RGBA. So, <laughs> so it's, it's still a gain for us. Um, there's, there are a few regressions related with that in WebKit. We, we are polishing a bit a uh, few things, um, but it's, it's already working well. Um, that's all I have. If you have any question or want to discuss anything, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you have a microphone. Slide. In one of your slides, you mentioned Android support for WPE. Yeah. But uh, from what I know, there is no JStreamer in Android. There is only Open Max. No? No, so we how you link? Both? Well, you, you can use JStreamer in Android. OK. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but the, the efforts we've done uh, about that were not related with Media Playback yet. It was only about uh, rendering basic web pages. OK. And do you target to support Open Max? No. Well, yeah, there are GStreamer OpenMax plugins. Okay. So depending on your platforms, they will be used or not by, uh, they will be selected or not by the playbin element, by the code bin. Okay. Do you have much in play? Do you have like an equivalent of Chrome driver for automatic testing, WP? Because in Chromium, we we're doing some EME playback, and you know we, we've got some tests where we can drive the browser and you know to get some <coughs> automated results. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering if there's yeah, something similar already. Yes, uh, yes, yes. It, there is an um, ongoing effort to actually uh, provide a specification about that. I think it's called WebDriver. And we have a backend for that in WP, and uh, it's uh, working quite well. So you, you can automate testing in WP as you, you do in Chromium. Okay. So f do we still have time? Ah, okay, so I can't show the other demo yet, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, thank you.